Hello everyone and welcome back to Trek Yards. I am Captain Foley. And I am Connor Cockney. We are here today to talk about something very important. And we're going to use science to explain a lot of things. So guys, as you know, uh, a lot of people have been pointing out the uh, large turbo lift area of the Discovery. The, the turbo lift cavern, the hashtag planet turbo lift. Um, Bit, bit of a problem. Which in itself is an evolution from the coined phrase the Turbolift roller coasters from season two and one. We're going to get into a lot of detail here, but the first thing I want to address is the fact that Samuel, did, weren't you aware that in season two, episode 16 of Enterprise, the episode called Future Tense, they, there was a person from the 30 sec, uh, 31st century in a pod, and the pod had the TARDIS interior. It was huge inside. That's obviously what happened with Discovery and the refit, right? And it would work if this was the first time they used it. It would still look stupid, but it would be a quite clever little, oh, okay. But as I said earlier, the exact same absurdity, but with that future spin, appeared in season one, season two, and short track on the Enterprise. So it's not even the Discovery herself that has them, it's just part of the flair. So once you, then, once you remember that, that argument is, is void. Pre-TOS before when we first saw it and People are going to say, well, you know, Discovery is now in the 32nd century. This was 31st century tech, so it's a refit thing. It's not, clearly, because it was in seasons one and two, as we talked about. But but they had the pod in Enterprise. So they must have used, they, they adapted the technology for Starfleet, obviously, for every future ship. But didn't the pod disappear and go back to its its own time? Yeah, and they had no readings. That was the whole thing. Because they couldn't scan it, if I recall. Like, they, met, they actually had to go into the pod and saw it. All they had was their, their eyes. So that's that's debunked right out the gate. It was a good idea, and if yeah, if season three would have been after the refit was the first time we saw it. Fine, cool, great. Still they looks stupid time. though, but a nice little bit of canon. Yeah. All right, guys. As we know, there is a schematic of Discovery um, from the Art of Discovery book, which is season one, um, which has a big empty space within the the secondary hull of the Discovery, which is called the Systems Hub, which is very important because that that's where this apparently magical place exists. It's a very vague name, but there is a multiple deck space. That said, we've seen, and it is in, it is in the like internal l Carsy stuff as well. That said, we also know how many decks the Discovery is, and we've also seen the shuttle bay. And there's a great shot in this season where it shows the shuttle bay. It's the entire height of the of, of the uh, secondary hull. You can see it. I mean, yes, there's a little bit underneath it. Like, you know, there's a little bit more bulk there, but it's give or take the entire height. Yeah, and we've seen the schematics of the ship basically from the top as well. And the shuttle bay takes up a huge chunk of that space and kind of butts onto the whole spore drive area and engineering. The amount of decks on Discovery is 21 decks. It's pretty standard, even the refit uh, Enterprise had the same. That makes the length of Discovery 2,444 feet. Bigger than the TOS Constitution class. Or at least longer. Longer more internal volume, longer. although a lot thinner in, different, obviously thinner in different places. It's like. also worth pointing out that we have seen into the bridge window. So that being said, um, our good friend Tim Davies, who you know took some of these shots of the interiors from season the last episode of Season 3 of Discovery of the Turbo Lift area, used his Vanish Point tool to calculate uh, how much room and volume is in there based on the actor's heights and things like that. Um, the interior doesn't fit the ship. This is something not new in Star Trek, as the interior of the Delta Flyer doesn't really fit the, the exterior of the ship. Um, but those are all so, within a couple of feet. So he's done some calculations and things and figured out that there needs to be an additional 36 decks to actually get the height and, and the measurements that are here, which brings a total deck height of the new Discovery to 57 decks tall, which makes its length 8,828 feet. So you're telling me the ship is 57 decks, which is mostly hollow in the secondary hull and a hollow shuttle bay too. That's what it's telling me, because it looks bloody hollow. Yes, yes. And if you take into account the warp core rejection scene, which, well, no, you got the shuttle bay, and then where the thing comes out, it's roughly in front of the shuttle bay, and according to the schematics, behind the spore drive chamber, which is fine, because that's where engineering is, it's backed up onto the spore drive chamber. After the warp core rejects, it looks to be about a deck in height for the warp core, which is very small for a warp core, but there's the conceit that the Discovery's been refitted. It's a new future advanced warp core that's super compact. That's fine. The tube that it travels down calculated at about 15 decks. Discovery before the refit had about 10 decks in that area, um, but... So that means you have to add decks to just that scene. And the refit 
discovery almost seems slimmer in that area. And now we do see the turbo lifts in the scene moving along. So we know the height of the turbo lifts. If you use shots of Saru and Burnham entering and exiting a turbo lift, you get their heights. You can calculate the height of the doors, calculate that. That's how this was all done, um, which makes a lot of sense. Um, we've already talked about Discovery's length with the revamped numbers being uh, 8,828 feet uh, to the original 2,444 feet. So like four times the length. So we've already got that sense. So there's the Discovery and the Connie. Already an odd comparison just by themselves. And of course you can see the future pod because that's the TARDIS tech. Great, cool. Now here is the, and you guys guessed it, the massively bigger Discovery. Now the thing is too, we did talk about earlier when we saw in the window, we saw Lorca. We know the size of a person compared to the bridge window. Scale up the ship to that size and put a person there. Obviously there's problems, right? So yeah, so the before, I mean, okay. And that's the official height, so clearly it's a six foot person, so clearly it about works. Then when scaled up to the new deck height to actually have access to the internal volume, something's wrong there. I can't quite put my finger on it. Well, I mean, I could, he's so small, I could put my finger on it, couldn't I? I could squish him. See, this is the problem we had with one of the Stargate ships, people calling out the official scale, and as soon as you put a person into the window, you're like, clearly not. It's one of those clearly not situations, and you can easily see it's beyond insane. But let's compare it to other ships in the universe. The sarcophagus ship, yeah. and, we, and we saw Discovery remember fly around the sarcophagus ship. It's small, and it was meant to be, and it's huge. I mean, you can see it compared to a Borg cube, and obviously a Borg cube width and height same, so you can imagine this metric just the other way. You had this great idea of including the Zindi Aquatic ship, because we saw that fun sequence enterprise where the NX-1 goes inside of it, so that is already a, a cavernous internal volume. And blow me, it's almost the same size, which you don't really think of, because that's meant to be a big, it's, it's the biggest ship of their era. And you can see the NX are one size, and it fits beautifully into the hull. And now put that same, you can understand it, on top of the Discovery, and oh look, NX01 length plus sized. I remember, this is just a space that fits the turbo lift shafts, the things that let people go places. There's no, there's nothing else in there. It's not as if there's a hydroponics or zero G construction facility. It's just hollow space to have work bees fly around to fix the inside of stuff, I guess. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to point out that in season one and two, you do see work bees flying around in there. And it was called the Turbo Lift Roller Coaster by a lot of people, including us, uh, because the, the Turbo Lifts were all on rails. It has been refitted. It's worth pointing this out. It has been refitted to include programmable matter tech, where the programmable matter forms the gates in front of the, the lift as sometimes it's Sometimes, anyway. They don't, they don't always do it for the visual effects, but they do it sometimes. <laughs> Yes. Worth pointing that out, though, that the rails are gone now. So there's even more internal space with less less restrictions on the turbo lifts, I guess, because they're not on rails anymore. But, but just uh, the concept of having to lift the rail does this. Why are you wasting time and space? It's like, shouldn't the turbo lifts be attacked like on the wall? Like like in like in this episode, a turbo lift they book, book and burn into is against a wall. Why not just go up the wall? Bing bong, you know, at deck 13 and then go to the ceiling, go along, go down again. Why are you going across and up? This is surely less efficient. And why that, as you said, why are there nine tailors flying when there's only seven, you know, there's only a few people in the ship and no one's traveling because they're all trying to kill the people, the main heroes. That's just to show movement and things going on because yes, everyone's off the ship except for the bridge crew who are passed out in a corridor. Only the regulators are left. So why are there so many turbo lifts moving around and doing things? It just doesn't make any sense at all. I was just going to say, we've seen turbo lifts from TOS and Voyager. We've seen turbo lift shafts. That's been a, a thing, you know, to get away from the bad guys, whatever. Sometimes you got to use a turbo lift shaft. TNG, and they climbed up one once. Star Trek V was a huge one, and that was silly enough. But An internal volume on a starship without TARDIS tech is quite limited. you got rooms, so corridors or uh, turbulo shafts are straight up and down. They go horizontal to get to you different sections. Well, they're in the MSDs. You can see them. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you've, seen, you've seen a lot of cutaways, blueprints, uh, the, the TNG uh, Enterprise D blueprints by Rick Sternbach and Michael Kuda show the turbulo shafts going horizontal and whatever. Limited room because it's a starship. You don't have TARDIS tech. You don't have unlimited volume, unfortunately, internally. I mean, we're always so. confused by the small size of the crew in the ship. Um, and that you know, if, if the entire second hull is hollow, except for shuttle bay, spore, spore room, uh, spore holding chamber. Because remember, they did build it with a big spore garden forest in there. Yeah, and that's on the schematics as well. That's just 
Yeah. So they, we have no idea if they filled that with something else in season two or three. So we, we've got to assume it's still a big hollow room like that as well. So are we assuming only the saucer has anything in it? That would explain the small crew, but they explicitly said in season one they have like 150 science things at a given time, which is more than the crew, which means more than one crew, more than one science per crew member. A ship that can do the most science of any ship in the fleet. All the secondary hull is hollow. Its primary hull, one ring is entirely spore drive tech. One ring is purely uh, uh, crew quarters. So where are these labs? Even Lorca's laboratory or menagerie is shown in the secondary hull on uh, one of the blueprints as well. But anyway, so let's go to the top view with everything in the kitchen sink included. Once again, we see both Discoveries and the Enterprise and the NX and everything on top of a ball cube, because why not? Because you know how in TNG the ball cube was a big imposing ship? Yeah, not to Discovery, at the 54 decks, not so much. And you can see that, yes, at this scale, the NX-01, the caverns are bigger than the length of the NX-01. No, it'd be about the same size if you take the shoulder bay out. Although clearly the shoulder bay doesn't fit in NX-01, so already doesn't make sense in any way, but... Uh... Or even just the board cube. I mean, we've seen the inside of board cubes with the drones lined up in the big empty space. And there you go, that's your turbo lift shaft. Apparently. That's true. It's a big chunk of bulk cube. <clears throat> and like we said, this was first introduced in season one, doubled down on season two, and then they quadrupled down because we hadn't seen much of them in this season. Then they quadrupled down with it in the last episode with an over exaggeratedly long fight scene in this space. So they wanted us to know that this existed. They did. They, we could have forgotten about it. We could have been like, okay, that was just a season one, two thing. It's fine, whatever. But no. No, and, and it's sad because I'm looking back at the season two version, and not only are there the roller coasters, there's also beams, and and things that are so small they they're not, I mean they may be moving you know information or or, or or power or plasma, but you aren't science labbing in this, so it's just, um, it, it's both hollow but also totally unusable, so it's the worst of both worlds. And again, we've even seen in TOS when they're riding the turbo lift, it's you see it going, woof, woof, woof. they're moving up and it stops, and you hear. Err. And then and you see it move sideways. It's not roller coastering it. It's it's doing what a turbo shaft would do. And obviously, people are going to say, "Hey, um, Star Trek Five, we have a faulty turbo lift thing with way too many decks, and Spark and TOS taking two minutes to go one deck." These are also mistakes because remember, Star Trek Five, it was a plaque they they swapped out. It was, it was a sticker for the deck level, which went up to 74, which is actually higher than the 57 that we figured out for Discovery. So if anything, the refit was 74 decks. We came at you with a lot of science, a lot of numbers, um, even even addressed the Enterprise Season 2, Episode 16, Future Tense episode with the TARDIS tech. Doesn't work. Sorry, guys. Um, it, it was a great call out, though, a great mention, but doesn't work. It would have been fun then if Burnham or Book had opened the door and said, Oh my god, what the hell? Oh yeah, we got the new space displacement tech. Our internal volume is now four times the size. That would have been that would have been it. Well, that would have set a really da dangerous precedent for future episodes, because then you would just have had, you know, like you said, why even bother having spaceships if you can have a shuttle with a site with a spaceship inside? You know, you start hurting logical, you know, problems, whatever. Hmm. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Um Put in the comments what you think about the numbers and talk about it. Let us know your thoughts. And if you want more conversations like this, we're always here. We're doing live discussions. We're doing videos like this. We break things down, make the size comparison charts so you guys don't have to. We can bring it to you and you can look at it and discuss it and share it with other people. So please share the video, like the video, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Notified, thumbs up is always good, both, you know as a like and as a bell ringy thingy do it and and thanks and, tim and yes tim davies was a big help with this one so thank you so much real uh, uh, real really, professional really in terms of it. graphics and well known in the community for being really really good at what he does and very unbiased so he just does the math math speaks for itself and we make visuals based on the math which speaks for themselves too but if you want to help us to make more visuals and more of celebrating tim i guess because he's so awesome then help us out on patreon paypal join the channel on youtube or super chat any and all ways all really really useful or look in the description down below for swag etc and of course just tune in those likes do mean a lot as well it's free so why not that's right so until next time i'm captain foley and i'm connor kongs bye guys bye